this subject may not be that important or essential to hear at this conference, but I nevertheless would like to speak about that because it might be one of the most discussed issues in the Russian healthcare. Whether we want it or not to discuss it, uh, myself, I am a, I am an oncologist, or to put it narrower, oncogynecologist, and most often when I am invited to certain places as an opponent, uh, nobody usually wants to hear you, but they have just started. Again, I don't want to uh, for Rashi to uh, get offended. Uh, but we have already several hospital beds and we invite the initiative for consultation. But uh, during this concilium we have sent a prescription to uh, covering his whole issue and when it was over uh, they were sitting everywhere on the left side and uh, usually the people say that we are really in great demand and I would like to tell you what we need this kind of medical assist aid uh, first and why do we have to do it uh, in Russia medical volunteer service uh, for palliative care was opened in St. Petersburg in 95. They were the first who tried to institute a vessel which was turned over in 1915. Uh, also, uh, our level of palliative of this uh, drug can be received. Now we must have a new list uh, of drugs which could be used for uh, palliative care uh, now rendered at the hostess. This is the definition. Uh, improvement of the quality of life of terminally ill citizens. In uh, the federal law, uh, the federal law equates palliative care to emergency health care and any other kinds of health care. In 1917, the president said uh, that we have to offer palliative services also in other service industries and a new pre presentation uh, was made in regard to that. Uh, palliative health care uh, covers non-traditional methods of health care of terminally ill people and it also uh, can 
и да call your family and the palliative care was also supposed to supply the patients with effective painkillers including narcotic drugs and this year after the new law is passed quite a number of new medical centers will open its door now all primary care uh, all the units of uh, health care doctor's offices uh, at schools and colleges at factories and plants uh, all this uh, will be uh, for the sake of the ill people and uh, for the people who uh, the people who want to start palliative health care uh, we do not compete we've got to find a proper balance between the attempts at one's own life and selection of those uh, methods of treatment uh, that will prolong life uh, and not risk it. We have several uh, answers to the question what does uh, EDK uh, the organization has to do with that. And this care can be rendered uh, to the patient in parallel with the main treatment, with the basic therapy. 70% of those present in uh, the room uh, answered uh, properly. Uh, palliative health care is not a full, is not at all similar uh, to the terminally ill patients, including it in the oncology department. For instance, uh, we had no palliative care, uh, though that was prescribed in the laws. Practically none were open and as regard to the prescriptions they were not allowed to uh, give that uh, kind of satisfaction to the people. It is very often that when patient suffers from pain he may be released from the hospital without receiving any prescription because our uh, principal objective uh, is to kill pain uh, and add things which will give more comfort and lifestyle to the patients. I think that you being an oncologist of a very high level, uh, uh, these big organizations never understand what it means. More than that. Moreover, now there is a movement uh, to start palliative care uh, at the moment uh, when the person is asking for them. Uh, when we remove uh, the factors that before was uh, uh, to be uh, uh, 
to read it uh, at the very beginning uh, because of his cancer of Leah. And something else like that. Uh, it hasn't been like that for all the time because uh, hospitals now have shown that they do not only take care of the terminally ill patients, but they enhance treatment. Some people, after hospices, they survived for as long as two. 0.7 here. Uh, when uh, people try to curb undesirable symptoms, uh, and after which they can go to a specialized uh, medical institution, uh, which is now called the necktie arrangement. But today we have not so many uh, cancer patients uh, as those who have suffered from strokes. And it happens that the patients may recover after heavy strokes. Now the question, do all patients uh, have a right to join the hospice of palliative care. No, of course not, because it is only very uh, sick patients who nobody knows uh, how to take care of uh, will uh, be singled out. But the order signed by two ministers, uh, Smirnova and Tapirin, uh, it is specified that uh, in August our children's uh, religion and initiative was uh, to discuss the future uh, treatment. We shouldn't be aggressive in this case because we see bad symptoms which uh, do not, not uh, which you at clinics do not usually observe. Uh, we, uh, it is recommended to prescribe regular and palliative care at the same time to the patients. But if we speak about a patient uh, with where the tumor has already spread, uh, they perhaps need more attention than patients with a smaller tumor. Uh, this results in lack of communication between the patients, uh, medical people, for instance, a patient uh, uh, may receive uh, treatment which will be ineffective because of uh, those difficulties they have. Uh, what is also very important is the evaluation of symptoms. Sometimes we focus on aggressive treatment without 
taking care of symptoms. Quite a number of patients, they need consultations because they are afraid. Uh, they have enemas. They are praying for a miracle. Of course, all of them need consultancy and they need support. Uh, next uh, stage, uh, whether uh, we are ready to give the mother this joint treatment of the patients. Uh, the recommendations that we have, we have to start palliative care for the patient within eight weeks uh, from the moment that the diagnosis was made. We have to uh, uh, send people with uh, older and incurable diseases to the palliative care centers. We should maintain contact with the relatives of the patient. Uh, the symptom controls, uh, psychological stress removal, and the functional condition of the patient. Also, uh, we have an option to uh, communicate with uh, the existing and the future of the modern uh, gas for cars uh, or and we beg you that we should take preparations uh, to be ready for any kind of contingency. There are patients uh, with anemia they have enemas. If we uh, try to eliminate these conditions, uh, perhaps the patient will be much more comfortable than before. But in view of the old uh, of the old uh, list of uh, what the providers, we have to teach patients to use all those paraphernalia that can help them to improve their quality of life. Uh, the patients uh, should be again trained to use uh, the uh, sticks, uh, all those uh, perhaps aggressive treatment that could facilitate their condition without aggravating it. Uh, they must have also... Okay. Please pay attention to the Ministry of Justice statement. Um, the criteria um, patients should meet uh, for receiving palliative care. Patient with metastasing, metastatic tumor, patient oh, you know, who are severe, symptomatic, yeah, we have to manage them jointly. That's a pyramid. Uh, palliative care 
provision like a specialty care, tertiary care, primary care. Mm. And we have the law and the regulations and even changes made to amendments made to uh, drug, illicit drug law. And basically, 32 healthcare establishments have uh, been monitored. And you know, they had to uh, comply with the obsolete, obsolete uh, regulations of how to inject a drug, uh, narcotics. You know, somehow uh, a doctor should attend the, the procedure performed by a nurse. Often time, he just the head of the department uh, is granted access to the safe with narcotics. Basically, you know, all those, you know, mad things. Uh, and there's ten, um, the, 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 the disposition regarding uh, the narcotic use is um, endorsed by chief nurse. But again, we uh, uh, don't have to comply with the uh, obsolete regulations. Uh, who actually provide palliative care to cancer patients? Who? Oncologists, uh, area internists, uh, general practitioners, doctors in the hospice, all above. Yes, all above. Mm -hmm. And colleagues, it's basically these patients are to be referred to social services, and symptoms uh, should be controlled. It's an, another extra burden, I understand that. Look at the challenges, you know, of 2014. The myriads of problems, challenges have been you know, verbalized, State Duma and the Ministry of Health, you know, lack of proper painkillers and some other things. And we changed a lot. You know, psychological support. Basically, we can hire already clinical psychologists. The staffing pattern permits that. But we don't see many things in oncology service. In 2014, we have just three molecules of narcotics. Now we have six. Pramidol. You know, it's still our favorite narcotic protocol. Unfortunately, it's again, uh, it doesn't sound very scientific, but you know, request for pharmaceuticals is admitted on a quarterly basis. But you know, the leading uh, healthcare institutions, you know, there are no uh, tramadol, tramadol is not available, and no, the morphe, morphine should be available at uh, the nursing station and the ICU and uh, emergency room. Unfortunately, you know, that's a case. Well, I cannot, one cannot make any presentation on palliative care without the uh, photographs of our patient. Oh. Unfortunately, you know, there are few cancer, pediatric Kapit cancer patients. And, but we have uh, adult uh, palliative care patients. And basically, it takes about half a year for them uh, to uh, die after the discharge. And they don't know what to do, they are in a constant search. And basically, you know, they face their disaster without any support. Of course, we have to refine our regulations, so we have to set up, you know, like a special palliative care unit. It's not uh, very difficult. The Association of Hospice Care carries out uh, annual conferences. This year, uh, you know, this conference will be held on October 30th, 31st in Moscow. Development of palliative care. 
and it's a conference with international participation. We I mean, we are supported by the senators, state Duma members, and president in January visited the Children's Hospice in St. Petersburg, Duma, you know, visited both uh, adult and pediatric hospices. But, well, it's not, um, they are not very fast developing. Well, basically, uh, it's not costly. We have to just pay a doctor's salary. And the morphine is not costly at all. It costs 19 rupees. No, basically, you know, like uh, bandages are expensive and some uh, items, care items. Well, that's why it's not like a costly endeavor. No, that's why I'm encouraging you. You know, we have to implement what is to be implemented and help ourselves and, of course, our patients and their relatives. Thank you very much, Diana. Questions to Diana. Diana. Uh, please, microphone. Thank you very much, Diana, for your excellent presentation. Please tell me concerning novel regarding painkillers. Uh, should we use uh, pills, uh, capsules? No, no. Under no circumstances. No. Yes, there is a mad story about Counter Admiral Panasenko who committed suicide. Vice Admiral. And there is a law, you know, with nickname Apanasenko law. Uh, abolished uh, painkillers, oral painkillers uh, from our practice, As, and especially like uh, plasters. Uh, you know, oftentimes, you know, the body, dead bodies are taken more uh, with those uh, plasters, tapes. No, we don't do that. And what about the pills of morphine? Basically, in Kazakhstan, um, they are available. I actually sent her a photograph. We, you know, in fact, developed it. No pharmaceutical form formulary. Uh, what is a sh long acting or short acting morphine? The mean, mm, sh yes, this uh, list of essential drugs is approved by WHO, World Health Organization. Yeah, it is. It's made available in Russia this year, and um, it's pr produced. Uh, locally. But our doctors don't know how to um, dispose it, not how to use it. There are the international requirements for um, narcotic control. Of course, we have to fight you know, illegal turnover of narcotics, period. But this fight should not overweight, you know, it should affect availability of narcotics to people. You cannot even, you cannot buy it for money. No, you have to wait in line and get the prescription. And of course, we're uh, collaborating actively with Kazakhstan. 
when we develop documents, a joint document, and of course we have to change our federal laws and local regulations. But availability of short-acting morphine and pills is um, no, it's it's feasible. Uh, you have to order them. You know, and uh, multiple injections a day aren't good at all. Sixty injections a day. You know, I had an idea to show this uh, syringes uh, and patient uh, who is cachectic. Of course, sublingual pills, capsules are more humane. And our nurse, uh, you know, approaches patient. You know, she, she, she cannot even find the site to make an injection. Uh, Tramal is the favorite. Uh, drug in the country, but our patients already lost their muscles and other forms are good. Okay. We mentioned six formulations. Yes, fentanyl in ampules, in plastic, and intranasal uh, fentanyl is under in a pro is in the process of uh, registration. Fent Fentanyl may be used in ICU and with the frame of palliative okay. morphine, uh, short acting, long acting, and morphine in ampule. Omnipolar combination of uh, popularin and morphine. We have buprenorphine. It's a St. Peter's School. Uh, buprenorphine with uh, naloxone. And basically, it's used for um, substitution therapy. And the dosage of all naloxone is different. So, profitol, sublingual, local drug. We have promidol, trimipiridine only for acute pain, oxycodone with naloxone and pill, and you know, the entire world uses it except for us. No, we don't have hydromorphone, and the roadmap uh, till 2024, signed by Medvedev, does not imply ketamine and pill. Buprenorphine and plaster, and we started, can you know, discussing cannabinoids, cannabinoids, not now, not in the nearest future, but cannabinoids for medicinal use. No, no one heard of that except for you. In our country, I mean, not everyone who watch watches TV. <laughs> it wasn't on TV at all. <laughs> well, it's a. It's actually the email address. A short question. The regulation. I know that the regulation changed. Okay, the patient has no house a registration, is not registered in this particular area. Is she or he allowed a receiving like a hospice care? No. Well, palliative care is funded from the regional budget. No, it's not a part of the uh, mandatory health insurance. Uh, it means that we serve just the regional patients, local patients. Uh, do the patients from elsewhere right to obtain painkillers? Yes, they are somehow assigned to a pharmacy, local pharmacy. But as for hospices, there are two solutions. The, uh, special permission of the regional department of health. Okay. 
uh, let um, us hospitalize patients from elsewhere. Okay. But there is like a program of state guarantee. The subject of the Russian Federation provinces should sign uh, like a collaboration agreement. Uh, it's not developed yet, but for the first time they, you know, started discussing under the federal law, the patient, you know, will be able to receive treatment not at their res place of residence. Mostly it's Moscow and St. Petersburg. Okay. The patient is discharged from hospital and the patient needs uh, narcotics. The patient. You have to discharge this patient with a prescription. Thank you very much.